Hey everyone, Mike here. Um, I'm going to make one of these flies here and it is pretty much just made out of a few a couple of different um, materials and that and one is I got I lay a base of this three millimeter foam. I'll show you how we do that here in a minute. <clears throat> and then I uh, cover the body with some one millimeter foam to cover up all of the uh, thread marks and that sort of thing. And the reason why we do it that way with this three millimeter is so that uh, it gives this head a lot of buoyancy so that when it hits the water, actually you, you can see in this photograph here how it, how it floats in the water where the tip of the head right here is at the, at the uh, water line and then this part floats down below but not too much where it's completely inverted. It actually lays in there really nice and the balance is uh, using uh, the right hook which is a uh, B10S uh, size 12. Now there might be some hooks out there that would be uh, suitable for substitution. Uh, I don't really know what they are offhand although I have a box full of hooks that I've had for probably 30 plus years that I've been doing some tying in, probably close to 40. Um, but anyway, this thing here is just, um, again, the three millimeter foam, okay? And then it's skinned with this one millimeter foam, all right? And the first thing we need to do is cut a piece of uh, one quarter inch, uh, three millimeter by one and a half inches all right and then we'll go ahead and load up our vise and it's going to be pretty important to have a vise that has a rotary function to it and you'll see why here in a minute it's uh, nearly Im imperative but we're going to load the hook up here with um, some thread and it doesn't have to be real pretty just get it on there and get it towards the back and the reason for that is uh, it's laying your base for the um, so that your materials don't twist on you when, as you're tying or as you're fishing this as, as you're fishing this fly. Now, one of the things that you may some people might say is it's not a fly because it's not fins and feathers, but uh, it is a fly. It, it's a fly weight. I don't really know exactly what the weight of this fly is, but I'll take a measurement and put it down at the bottom here in post-editing as I do this video. Uh, but the next thing we're going to use is this stuff right here. This is Bonnie cord, all right? I use this stuff a lot uh, because it combs out or brushes out to this kind of material right here. It's, it's perfect for what we do in fly tying. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this piece that I've already got pre-cut and we want this uh, tail to go out about the, the length of the hook. And I wanna bring this thread up to the front here a little bit. There and there. And then just one, two easy wraps, pull the thread up, position it so that the material is on top of the hook and then just wrap back, it doesn't have to be touching wraps at this point, just get the thread get the thread to the back of your hook just like that. Um, I like using curved scissors and I'll take the curved part and put it up and cut the material just like that and then bring my thread back to the front lay that material down and then take my piece of foam that I cut and the hole is bigger on one side than it is the other because what I did was I took an old uh, bodkin and I heated it up and this one here is about shot and this is probably about the third uh, tip that I put in it. All you, all you need to do to change it out is heat this, of course you're going to use, want to use a pair of pliers, it's just to heat this piece of brass up and then pull the, pull the uh, needle, it's essentially a needle, and you just pull it out 
and then you can take it to Joann's or Hobby Lobby or some place that sells large needles, you know, large needles, cut the threaded part off so it's got the right diameter. This, is, this will already have your lead in it. If you want to stick a little bit more in it, that's okay, but hold it with a pair of pliers. Um, warm, warm up the uh, needle. This is not the exact needle, but let's see if I can get this on the... Yeah, so this this part here you're going to want to cut off, all right? This isn't the same diameter as this, but once you get it cut off, um, take some sandpaper, some super fine sandpaper, and kind of rough this area up here, and then with it up inverted like this, hold it with hold it with pliers, all right? Hold it with a pair of pliers, heat it up, and then you can just drop that new needle down inside there, and you've got yourself a brand new a brand new bodkin. Uh, with, it's actually a needle, so that's how I replace them in in these things here. Uh, that was definitely a, a uh, going off on a tangent, but uh, so what we're going to want to do is uh, take this uh, dressed up hook with the let or the uh, thread on it and put some I, I I for this particular now I've got thin and I've got uh, gel I got thick and gel and so three different kinds of CA glues uh, they each one has its has its place and I can tell you that laying materials down um, you you really want to use um, the gel because the gel, I believe, sets up much better and faster uh, than, than, um, than the thinner stuff. So, now what, what we're going to want to do is take the, the uh, larger end of this hole and put the larger end on so that the smaller end is facing out. So, larger end and the smaller end. All right, so the other thing that we're going to want to do, and I hope I can get this in here, is we're going to want to have this foam ride up towards the back. If you, if you look here, it's kind of centered, centered on the front, and then it rides up towards the back. And then bring this other piece around and match, match it up, and then hold it tight. For a couple seconds, it shouldn't take too long with that gel. That gel sets up really nice. Okay, so and I'll put I'll actually use this little knob here to kind of hold my thread, my my uh, bobbin away from this area here, so that when I put some glue on it, um, it won't uh, it won't cut my thread. Okay, so now what we're going to want to do is kind of round off the nose here. We don't want this blunt end. Um, we do. It does have a really nice. Pr Ow! They sh sh <laughs> Gamagatsus are sharp. Uh, it, you do have a real nice thin body here, and then it gets thick here. So what we're going to want to do is kind of clean that up. I'll turn my scissors around like so, and I'll put the. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll rest the. I'll rest the the blade. On the head, on the eye of the hook, and then just kind of cut up, just kind of cut a little piece off of it, just like that. And the same thing over here. Put the put the blade down on the eye of the hook, and cut that piece off there. And then you got yourself a nice taper in the front. Okay. So now, what you're going to want to do is take your scissors, your your uh, curved scissors hold your tail down and kind of hit the blade about three quarters of the way back and press down but not down so far wet sorry so far down that you're going to cut that material so that's what that's the shape that you're wanting right there that's the shape just like that all right so now we got the thread on there we're going to kind of start shaping it a little bit more with the thread in the back. Okay, so now what we're going to want to do is put our one millimeter thread or uh, EVA foam on 
and you want to put that on like so and then kind of cut this tag part out here and then now what we're going to want to do is bring this thread towards the front and that's going to help shape it again even a little bit more just like that and then kind of bring it back over to the middle like that like that there we go and what that does is it puts a really nice nice head on there of course it collapsed on me okay and that's what we want right there is that shape just like that because we're going to be able to finish the shaping out with this one millimeter stuff and you're going to want to kind of pull it not real tight but tight enough to let it stretch just a hair not a lot and then start wrapping it around with touching wraps I mean you want this you want this edge to touch the previous edge on the on the previous wrap and you're going to want to do it in such a way that it is very meticulously laid down so that you because you don't want <clears throat> You don't want wraps on top of one another because it actually starts put it starts putting a ribbing on it. And the reason why I use the one millimeter is because it's more forgiving if you do a little bit of a, a raised ribbing uh, because it, it really lays down nicely as you can see on this right here. And then keep going with touching wraps all the way to the front. All right. And then you're going to want to take your thread and tie that in. Now don't worry too much if it kind of travels on you on the front part here because it's going to be covered with the eyes. All right. So essentially, essentially that is what you want, right? right there all right that is exactly what you want right there see how nice and even that is it gives a really nice the body a really nice shape the uh, extra the little bit of extra uh, foam on top of the hook allows it to pull this fly to the surface of the water while the backside drops a little bit but it keeps it balanced really nice at this configuration so that it looks in the, it looks like this in the water, and I'm showing a, a photograph now of the um, of the finished product. So let's go ahead and and go ahead and uh, finish this off with a whip finish right here. All right, just like that. It doesn't need a whole lot because you're going to be covering this up with the the UV, and then just make a real quick inspection on it and just go around and see how all that looks. If it looks good, then you're ready for the next. The next step in this, and that is the last thing you're going to do is put the eyes on. Uh, now, now what we're ready to do that we've got the body and the tail material on there. Um, we're going to use these um, these sharpies, and I, I've got a few colors here. I got a dark green. I got a black. Right, this is a black too, but these are fine, and this one here is an ultra fine pen. So we got dark green, a black, uh, a red, not necessarily in this order is it going to be put down. This, the, the rest of them are neon colors. This is neon orange, a neon blue, and a neon green. Okay, So we're going, to use, we're going to use every one of those to get this thing colored up like a bluegill. <clears throat> and, and as far as the, um, the uh, bonnie cord, I'll have, I'll have, so that you don't have to go and buy a whole strain or stain of this whatever they call it, skein 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 of this uh, material I'm going to have it on my channel and it's going to run it'll set the smallest will be two feet I, I can cut you'll need to call me to order it but if you want a longer piece of course I'll bring the price down on it but um, the uh, this this is going to be two dollars a foot starting at um, two feet so it's a, a four a four a dollar piece and they're about like this they're two feet long all right 
and these are all of the collars that I have right now. There's a couple more collars that I'm wanting to get that I should be getting here pretty soon actually. But these are all the collars that I have. And I've got a few more collars that I'm going to get. All right. And the eyes that I use uh, are made, these, these things are amazing because they are holographic eyes, printed holographic eyes, and there, there is no eye that's made quite as good as these. This is a high quality engineer um, vinyl used in commercial sign shops. The stuff that you buy at Hobby Lobby, yes, it can be used, but I guarantee it does not have the reflectance and color change like this vinyl does here. And I plan on selling these um, in my Etsy shop as well. I'm just working out the details with that with the uh, with the sign shop. Uh, I guess this stuff I guess this stuff costs like a hundred dollars a roll for like 30 feet of it or so. I, I don't know. It's not it I don't yeah I can't remember what the price is that he gave me, but it's not it's not a cheap vinyl. Um, but it's an all but it's an awesome vinyl. All right, so let's get started on, on uh, coloring this thing up. Well, one of the other things that I want to point out here is I get these here. These are, um, these are uh, foam covered uh, makeup applicators, all right? And the only thing I use these for is to feather the, the, uh, the, the, the ink down so that I can lay a heavy, get a heavy hair and then pull it pull it down and then that way you've got a really nice feathered look to your to your uh, your coloring job here and that's pretty much what you're doing is just coloring these things so and you can do it without an airbrush that's pretty awesome right there so let's run this across let's take me to another camera here okay so let's take this across here like this and then I'll show you what I'm talking about with this thing here and I think it should do it yeah okay see how that pulled that down and kind of made it take let put a real nice blend to it so we'll do the same thing over here we'll take this dark green and we're going to lay it down across the top here and do the same thing take that makeup applicator and pull that green down just like that I mean it makes a really nice looking uh, fade. All right. So you still have this up on top, but what I'm going to want to do is, since I want that top to be a little bit darker, I'm going to take that white line. All right, right there. I'm going to take that white line and I'm going to put black on it, and then I'm going to feather. I'm going to feather that down a little bit, so it's the top of it is real dark and. Now, that darkness goes down into the green, and then that's what you should end up with, with right there. All right, that's pretty sweet looking actually. All right, so the next thing we're going to do this is a bluegill, so we're going to put uh, this fluorescent uh, blue, neon blue, on it, and we're going to put that up towards the front where the gills are because it, it is called a bluegill, right? So we'll put that right there. And I'm going to use my hand, my fingers, to kind of blend that back a little bit. So we'll just do that right there. And put a little bit more on. And throw it back right there. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some orange, like some bluegill have. Not a lot, not all of them, but some of them have, and just put that on there. Okay, and then I just might want to bring it on down here a little bit, like that, and then do the same thing over on this side. Let's make sure I do it about the same here. Okay, so there's the neon. Uh, orange and now what I'm going to do is take this neon green and kind of run it in there to kind of put a little bit of a bright green in there just like that alright 
and we'll kind of fade it out a little bit with our fingers. Now, uh, some more magic that happens here. It, uh, actually, let's do this because now we got this all covered with the uh, with the fine tip. Uh, the, we got this covered up with the fine tipped uh, sharpies, and we're going now. We're going to do some de detail work with this uh, ultra fine black pen. But before I do that, so that I know where to lay my my lines, I'm going to lay these. Um, I'm going to lay my eyes in, and I'll use. Uh, an exacto knife to pull it off and lay it down just like that and as we each one of these steps the closer we get to the end here the more life that we're going to be giving our fly and actually I know there's a lot of guys that's gonna say that's not a fly it doesn't it's not made from uh, fur and feathers so it's not a fly I'm like well yeah it is a fly it, it's 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 fly weight and it's going to take a fly rod to toss these things, so it's a fly. But just to make them happy, um, what we'll do, I dropped that one, darn it. What, what we're going to do just to make them happy is, okay, it's not a fly, it's a lure. Okay, it's, it's a lure, and that's exactly what it is, but that's, that's what a fly is. A fly is a lure in, in all reality. And so... Um, with that being said, since this is a, a fly, but they want to call it a lure, then I'm okay with that. We're going to call it a floor. We're going to take the first part of the fly, take the last part of lure, take the word, crunch it together. can't remember what that's called, but it's, there's a word for running words together. And um, we're going to make ourselves a floor. Look at that. That is a nice looking fly right there. So now we're not really quite finished yet. I'm going to put my little red hot spot on it right underneath between the eyes under the gills just like that. Alright. Just like that. Now that we've got that much done, now we can go to our detailed pen, which is our ultra fine. And now we're going to pull down, we're going to get shorter as we go to the back. We're going to pull down a line out of that black on top and about in the middle right behind the eye and then about in the middle and then just do it just like this oops let's go I got it on camera here do it just like that and then we'll do the same thing on the side over here so we'll take it and we'll bring it from the top and go down Take it about where the middle would be and go down and to the back, just like that. Okay, so now what we've got is that right there. It looks like I need to kind of coax my eyes up a little bit higher. Actually, once you lay these things down, it's kind of hard to move them, which is a good thing. Well, that thing is not, it needs to go up much higher into the back. I uh, might have to jump on another another eyeball. I am, because that lost its adhesive. Let's go ahead and stick another one on there. Need to be back just a little bit though. About right there, and more towards the top. That's better. Okay, so now what we're going to do um, for the final step is put put our uh, UV uh, resin on, and I like these um, capillary tips uh, because they have a very fine hole. And this this bottle right here, this bottle has sat on my desk for. I've had it for a year, and I keep filling it up with the uh, the like eight ounces, eight ounce bottle of um, UV that I buy. It's a UV hard, and I fill these up whenever it starts getting low. But that capillary tip allows very pinpoint um, application of your 
your UV adhesive. And so I'm going to do that right here. So let's go ahead and lay that down. It's almost like you're drawing with uh, UV adhesive here. And, and what you want to do is not drag it too much, but just uh, daub it on like I'm doing here. Because if you try to drag it too much, then what happens is what happens is the um, because we didn't let this dry. The best way to work these things is to, is to let that adhesive dry, or not the adhesive, the um, the pen, uh, the alcohol-based ink dry before you um, apply the UV. And I mean that's that's the best way to keep it from keep the colors from running on you. So we're going to see this is one of the reasons why you need the um, rotating vise and what I'm doing is I'm letting that overflow of uh, resin uh, coat the whole uh, fly all the way around and then you can see see that drop what happens is that takes off all that excess okay and then I go back to rotating it again and then I'll hit it with my light like so and that kind of freezes everything in and I don't have to spend a whole lot of time on this because I'm going to want I, I want to um, I, I want to uh, get the rest of the body coated and then we'll we'll uh, we'll finish it up with um, with a uh, good UV light light bath here so again here we go is we're just trying to daub it on I mean it's not going to hurt to if you're if you have it above it to kind of rotate or or you know move it while you're but try putting this tip down on the material and you got to be kind of quick with this because if you once you start putting this UV on a lot of it it starts it starts running on you just like it did on that head and you saw that little bit of uh, UV droop down to and that's what this is doing right here okay so that again see this is why the um, rotating vise is so important okay now we're going to do the same thing we did with the head is we're going to get this rotating so it's all the way around and then we're going to just let the uh, excess drop. Might see if it'll go again. No, well, that's kind of doing it. We'll touch it. Okay. So now what we're going to do is put this in a rotation so that it evenly spreads out all the way around the fly. Fleur. <laughs> you see, if you if you let it set too long, see what happens. But you still need a little bit of that. You know that. Uh, resin on there to be coated all the way around so it protects that uh, EVA foam. So once you get it to where it should be even all the way around then you can hit it with your light. Keep it spinning, keep it spinning and then you can start slowing it down after probably four or five seconds and then as it's as you're slowing down you can slow down even more and then once you get to a certain point then you can turn it completely you can stop turning it completely. Just don't do it anymore. And then now I'm going to take it from a straight, uh, the high power, past the medium power, back to high power, but but pulsating. I kind of think think that this helps um, cure the uh, resin even better. So there you are with that. Okay. Well, there you go. There's the uh, bluegill um, fly, and I did overflow it a little bit. Not too big of a deal. You just take your Zacto knife and just kind of cut that out there. 
of the eye of the hook. And all of the tools and things that I use will be on my website, okay? So, just clean that up real good. And then just kind of hit it. So that looks like I got a piece that's being a little bit of a burger there. So I'm going to heat up my bodkin. Alright. And then we're going to get rid of that. Bring us up the heat to where it starts to glow orange. And then you take it like a pencil and kind of brush it back and pull at the same time and that'll make it really nice and open and it'll open that eye completely up again as you can see right there all right so I mean that's a scent really that's a perfect perfect head and perfect fly for what we're going to be using this for anyway that's it um, if you got any questions um, leave them on the YouTube channel uh, that would be awesome um, and you know, I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, one of the things that'd be great is uh, consider subscribing to the channel, um, and I'm going to go on and let you know that you know uh, a lot of materials that I use are hard to find, or if you can find them, you got to buy you know in bulk. And most of us um, will not use probably 90% of the stuff that we buy. I mean, that's a flat-out fact. I mean, if you look a lot of, uh, I mean, actually, I can show you the stuff that I have that I've had, that I've gathered over the last, you know, probably 20 years, plus or minus, and, and longer than that on some stuff. But there's no use in buying the, uh, the whole uh, skein if you can just get, you know, this stuff, the, the bonnie cord in uh, whatever colors you need. Again, this is, you know, this is just a sampling. And they'll be listed on my uh, Etsy store so if you're interested any of the things that you purchase whether it be materials that I have that I'm selling or tools that I'm selling uh, or uh, my affiliate links to Amazon you know, no matter how you you uh, support the channel it would definitely be uh, it would be highly appreciated I really would appreciate that so I can continue doing uh, these uh, videos and finding different processes and that sort of thing. Anyway, until Mike, or until Mike, this is Mike. Until the next video, this is Mike. We'll catch you later.